One of the most controversial aircraft of the modern age is the hybrid between an airplane and a helicopter called Osprey. Considered by many as expensive, unreliable, too complex and generally unsustainable in the long run due to the latter, the Osprey continues to serve proving the contrary and getting its deserved place in the contemporary aviation. Interestingly, last decade proved that the design was ahead of its time from the get-go, especially with the upcoming vehicles for urban mobility based on the same ideas. Well, in general, mostly. However, facts such as the three presidential Ospreys produced but actually not allowed to transport the President of the United States, as well as the restrictions based on the safety records are a favorite subject for journalists and aviation, let's say, uh, experts, for lack of a better word, who continue to undermine this beautiful and advanced bird. This actually is a technical miracle. And whoever flew it, worked on it, or was involved in any way considers the Osprey a milestone in aviation industry and history. But uh, let's shift to modeling. The usual kit uh, that used to be designed for Osprey lovers was the Italeri Corda Scale 1. My first contact with that was back in 2003 when a friend of mine received it as a gift for his 28th birthday, but being a young Tower ATC then, he never actually found the time to build it. Even then, the kit wasn't something overly special and until now, there wasn't a decent alternative on the market. Of course, aftermarket companies dealt with a major part of the issues of the Italeri release, but still, not to the level needed to satisfy the modeling reality of the second decade of the 21st century. Enter 2021, coronavirus pandemic, wing nut wings gone belly up, and finally we got the new tooling of the Osprey in 48 scale. Hobby Boss promised it to us two years ago and luckily they kept their word. Not typical for most of the modeling companies, but a pleasant surprise nonetheless. The first release is of a MV-22B variant, Marines version, and it comes with a nice thick box with a refined, considering previous Hobby Boss stuff, box art. The picture here is more fluid, somehow more modern, and the overall quality of the boxing is good. Not comparable with the best of them out there, but definitely better than the most. The size of the box allows for some information about the kit to be placed on the sides. However, besides the 3D renders and the profile, including the decals and the photo edge sheet, Hobby Boss missed their chance to provide some serious information. But heck, who pays much attention to the boxes anyhow? The precious things are inside. Opening it, there is a surprisingly large chunk of space left free. This is an eye candy for me personally because I struggle with the companies that have the tendency to cram their boxes to the maximum and once you take out everything, you have to be a professor of mathematics to put it all back and make the lid fit without a huge bulge. This leads to potential damages of the plastic, scratches, permanent twist, and such. It is not a good idea. Despite the space left here, there are plenty of parts in the kit. Once built, it totals nearly 37 by 50 centimeters, which is uh, in 48 scale beyond decent. Everything is separately packed in plastic bags with the clear parts having additional protection and a separate bag, but that bag is packed alongside the largest sprue altogether. Not the best way uh, Trumpeter and Hobby Boss dealt with clears in the recent past when they were uh, separated, but it is acceptable. Photo Edge is ridiculously small for such a large kit. So let's start with it. 
As a matter of fact, Hobby Boss and Trumpeter never made a photo etch with a decent thickness in it is in sight mostly to brag about its presence. But uh, that will be taken care of by the aftermarket producers. And rather soon. But I don't want to be too harsh on Hobby Boss and I will admit that the thickness seems a bit improved. However, seat belts, fire extinguisher holders and a couple of meshes won't suffice and we are all aware of that. So this aside, let's get back to the instructions. The instruction sheet is the typical Hobby Boss trumpeter stuff. We all know about it. It is arranged in an understandable manner, but I didn't enjoy it very much to be frank, mostly because of its ending. There is an option of the folded wing and propellers and that's it. The other way of presenting the mighty Osprey is omitted for whatever reason. And this is not a good decision. It is actually not clear can you twist the nacelles and place it on the ground or there are only folded and in-flight options. And how am I certain that there is an in-flight option? Well, this can be found on the sides of the box pictured uh, on those 3D renders I already mentioned. And with the props uh, properly extended, there is no way for this thing to sit on the ground. Now Osprey can be presented in more than two positions, that is absolutely certain, and I think this is a miss from Hobby Boss part. Actually the miss is to mention it in the instructions and leave it to the Muller's imagination. But it is a definitely a miss. I'm pretty sure that the Master Muller's will figure it out, but this kit seems to be suitable for everybody and it is a shame that they missed to give you a thorough and carefully thought through description of the positions in which you can display this. Osprey is versatile, actually especially versatile aircraft. So yeah, from the instructions only one can judge that the cockpit looks quite nice, the gear wells are oversimplified and if you want to show the interior, well, there you will have to put something extra. Actually, I think for both the gear wells and for the interior, there will be a resin substitute soon. Although MV-22 sits relatively low, a lot of folks out there enjoy landing gear wells and that is an important part that wasn't taken under serious consideration by Hobby Boss. For the interior well, you don't see much of it is when closed, but if open, Either you need to scratch build or you will need to add photo etch and or resin. Everything else seems to be the usual trumpeter hobby boss level. Now the instructions feature a separate sheet with the color options as usual, but there we have only one so we will leave that for after the plastic since it deserves some more comments than the usual. The plastic is nothing new and the overall level is satisfactory. The propellers, which are on one of the most uh, important parts of the Osprey, are thin, as uh, the same can be said for the tail surfaces as well. This looks good. The fact that they can be folded is superb, especially knowing that for all titillary kit such option was presented as an aftermarket. Here it is in the box. Rivets and panel lines seems consistent and I would not speak about accuracy since I am not very familiar with the Osprey up close and personal. Many areas will be improved by the photo etch aftermarket companies, but even if you don't go that road, it seems that Hobby Boss delivered with this kit. It is quite nice. Nacelles or a simplified version of what could have been done, but then again we'll see what the aftermarket companies have to say about it, especially engine-wise. The molding of the fuselage halves are, well they are bulky due to their design and there might be some fit issues. 
that is not a weak point of trumpeter and hobby boss in general, but such shapes sometimes lead to undesired results. And if not everybody, it is guaranteed that some mullers will complain about it due to some troubles. Same goes for the clear parts, which will be something known for the helicopter mullers as a design and shape. But for plain guys, uh, this design might present some fitting issues. This is only expected outcome, of course, not a conclusion. Overall, everything is good, and for the price of about 100 to 110 US dollars, maybe 115 retail, this kit looks good and deserves that price tag. Again, from the instructions or the lack of thereof, uh, there is a hint that different positions are an option, even several at a time due to allegedly moving parts. But this is again a speculation. This can be uh, set as a conclusion only after a couple of completed kits are out there. How good the engineer the kit and the eventual moving wing and the cells will be clear again only after completion. Another thing I would refrain myself from concluding is about the accuracy of the Osprey here. I have no idea when can one get the drawings, schematics or whatever to compare. Pictures are definitely not enough to draw a firm conclusion how accurate in shape and size the kit is. And something like with the Larry's 30 second scale tornado, there might be discrepancies, but they are usually fixable. However, if they messed it up in general outlines of the model, like for example they did with the MiG 23BN and MiG 27, well, Trumpeter, this is beyond any talent whatsoever. It is not fixable. Uh, it doesn't look like that, though. Uh, this Osprey seems to be a good kit with a good representation at first glance. Now for the paint options, which is only one in this case. There is a Marines VMMT204 aircraft serial 16643 and this is it a two-tone light grade camouflage with nothing but two small lightnings on the vertical fins quite dull now i don't know did hobby boss took that decision on purpose or intoxicated but with the tons of extravagant and colorful tails available well it is another bad call now aftermarket companies will definitely take care of that error, starting with DN models and couple of paint mask sets on the way for various interesting MV-22Bs upcoming shortly. Others will most likely follow. And there are plenty of uh, already out there who served the Italy release. With that said, only one variant is a heresy, especially for the kit of that size and with such a price tag. Now, that might have been based on the eventual fact, like for example, this being the first of a long line of options, like Kitty Hawk uh, did with their Hawk helicopter, but I honestly doubt that. So, if you want to stray from the road, you will definitely have to invest a few more bucks to improve the single option that uh, Hobby Boss included in this kit. And overall, that is that with the Hobby Boss 81769. It is a definitely a good looking kit and seems like a fair investment too, especially with the fact that we cannot expect a new release from Zukimura, Hasegawa or Tamiya anytime soon. Although there is a hope for that. And I'm saying this only because Japan owns Ospreys and most likely any of those two or three mentioned and their A-listers will probably try the market with their own tooling of this beast. Again, I doubt that we'll have that in the future soon. And in all my honesty, I trust that few of the Osprey fans will test their luck and wait a decade or two more for it to happen. So, 
the kit is very decent probably with some measurement errors and this is an eventuality of course and even with the need of aftermarket i can only highly recommend this kit it will definitely look cooler than the most of the popular models that are on the modeling shows nowadays and will attract some attention but wait that is if there are actually upcoming mulling shows considering the worldwide hysteria with the virus last 13 months. Let's hope there will be some. Thank you for watching and have a great day.